Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at a handy little piece of software called Treeit. Now if you're a regular to this channel, you know I love me uh, free focused game development tools and that's exactly what we're looking at today. This is a tool for creating trees uh, for use in real time games and it is really powerful to be honest and it is also completely free thank you to jalau for sending this in to me hope i pronounced your first name right there but thank you for sending this uh, link to me I, I love when the community sends me stuff makes my work a whole lot easier so now we're going to jump in and take a look at tria you can see it right here in action we'll get to the specifics in just a minute about um you know how everything works but here is a tree that i created now i am very good at making ugly trees in this but fortunately there are so many capabilities here that you can basically create just about whatever tree you want we'll get into the specifics of the software and the links and all that down below uh, in a minute and it's also got a tree library so you can check out stuff that doesn't look like crap but what we're going to do instead is show you the process from the beginning so let's create us an ugly looking tree so here we go we're starting at the bottom now we're here you see we've got this uh this trunk basically going on right there we've got options we can turn the wind off we can turn the light off if we so wish but i'm kind of happy with both so let's leave the light on there we go so you can orbit left mouse button you can uh, zoom in and out with the middle mouse button, and you can pan with the right mouse button. Pretty straightforward controls. Now you've got your tree sitting here. You've got the trunk and the tree settings over here of the tree. We'll come back to the tree in just a second. We're actually dealing first with the trunk. Now you're going to notice here there are a ton of settings here uh, for splitting the trunk, for um, bending the trunk, for... Uh, flaring it forces applying on you can even have it so that the tree automatically you know shoots for the scun in the background some pretty cool stuff going on here um but yeah so what i'm going to do though is stick to the very basic stuff in fact i'm not even going to really change this i'm going to leave the trunk pretty much as it is uh, you can change the thickness of it and so on in the trunk scale but what i'm going to do instead is just start by applying a simple texture and the nice thing about tree is it comes loaded out of the box so if you want to come in here start things off start with a base texture so base okay Current texture, and we're just going to go ahead and pick, uh, let's say, Bark 3. It gives us kind of a, I don't know my tree names. It gives us a gray tree. All right, there we go. So now we got the blend. I'm not 100% certain if I need to use that or not, but I always set it to the same as my base. And then the stump texture. Again, there's three kinds to find. Let's use stump number two. All right, looks good to me. Uh, so now we're going to repeat the same thing for normal. So again, we're using Bark 03 as our example, and it comes loaded with normal maps as well. So let's just pick out the corresponding normal maps that match. And then I did, I did stump two there. And then once again, we're going to do the same process for roughness map. So three three and two. All right, there we go. So we just created, and now you see we have a trunk that actually looks like a tree trunk. Cool. Now let's go from there. Now, obviously every tree trunk has branches. So let's move over to the branch tab. Pretty straightforward. Once again, we can control the number of branches we want. So there we go. We're good. All right, there we go. We could actually stop right there. We can also start splitting the branch, branch branches, branches if we so wish. So now you see we're starting to fork some of the branches. We've also got the uh, option of doing branchlets and a whole lot more control as we go down here. So branch scale, uh, branch distortion. We can also, again, have it facing towards the sun or gravity or so on. Uh, we can change the amount of wind strength the amount that wind is affecting this guy uh, we can change the position of all the branches we can have them rotating in different locations and so on we've got control over the pitch the yaw and the roll and so on but i'm actually going to stick with pretty much what we've got out of the box because i find the more i play with settings the uglier a tree i create it and then again i'm going to show you in a little bit where you can actually get a library of trees so you can actually start with something good looking as opposed to the hideous crap that i'm creating all right so we've created uh, the trunk and the branch those two work together obviously they're sharing the same set of textures same normal maps and so on now we're going to go over to leaves now you can do multiple different leaf layers so you can have multiple different kind of leaves on a single tree or i guess you could have leaves and flowers uh and we got a couple of different options for how they are shown we can have them double-sided rendering uh we can have different cross sections for them but first off let's start off by just basically adding some in all right so we got leaves on our tree we currently have 75 leaves and i gotta admit they don't look great yet now do keep in mind everything we're doing has a budget cost so you look down here you can see we're using a total of uh, just under 3,000 polygons 3,200 are on the trunk. We have 3,200, no, sorry, sorry, 2,323 on the branches. And then we've got 300 being used by the uh, leaf polygons because we're using the simplest setup you could possibly go with. We could also switch to a diamond shape if that makes more sense. And I think in a lot of cases, actually, it probably does. So we'll stick with the diamond for now. And we, we've also got options for cone shapes or polygon quads. And you can actually kind of do a mixture of all of them if you so wish. 
but I'm just going to go with the diamonds for now. And then what we can do here, and what you're going to really want to do, is set some kind of a leaf. Now, once again, it's basically the same thing. You're setting a texture to use as a leaf. Uh, and again, it comes absolutely loaded with them. So if we want to make this, we can make it an oak tree or a palm tree or a tropical tree, a walnut tree or so on. Let's start with walnut. There we go. So there is a walnut option. Or we could come up here. We can actually do flowers with this guy. By the way, yes, you can use this to create bushes and flowers. Um, but let's go ahead with, say, fern. All right, we're going to make a fern here. So we got fern in our stem texture. Once again, let's pick a bark of some kind. So that's bark six and fern. So we're going to do the same process. Now, I do wish that it could automatically fill in all these so you don't have to match the fern, the fern, and so on. So if it already did it by name, and I think I said six. And then again, fern, and again, six. Of course, you can provide your own textures. You can load them in yourself. So if you've got your own that you want to use, you can do so. And Burn, and then done. So now the final task you're going to do is create an alpha mask for transparencies here. It could actually do it all for you. So basically just say auto. It'll zoom down to the size that you've created. Uh, and then you can say, yep, we're good. All right. So there we created our alpha mask. And there we now have a fern tree. Now what you're going to probably want to do is up them a little bit. So 75 isn't a lot of leaves for a fern. There we go. So we jack that up. You can jack that up to the maximum if you so wish. And you can see here now we're using a thousand polygons as a result. Uh, but you may also find that that is a little too one dimensional. You kind of notice when you look at them from the sides, they don't look that realistic. Well, we got the other option here. We can change out our cross section so we can have it crossed, or we can have it front, or we can have it crossed and front, or we can have it like so. I think crossed is probably a good compromise. It gives us a decent looking tree without creating a huge number of polygons. And obviously, if you switch this out, change the tree style, change the branches, or change the leaf style, you're going to get a really profound uh, difference in effect. We could also come up here, you see, and go ahead and change. We could add another leaf layer if we so wished and create a completely different kind of leaf there. But I'm going to, again, keep this guy really simple uh, at this point. Now, ultimately, a tree isn't really all that useful if you can't export it and use it in your game. So that's what we're going to do next. As you can see, there's a ton of leaf settings here, too. You can change and randomize the size of the leaf. Uh, the same kind of controls you get over all the branches and stuff are available here as well. Uh, so there are a couple other things to be aware of before we go ahead and export this out. I'm going to export it out and get it into the Godot game engine so you can see what the end results look like. Uh, we do come in here. You've got options here. Uh, specifically, you can pick the texture formats between direct draw surfaces, PNG, uh, Targa, or bitmap files. Be, be aware, though, bitmap files do not support transparency. Uh, so you're going to have little issues there. Uh, we've also got it. It's going to combine the trunk and branches together and leaf and mesh materials together. And it's going to export out the textures, which is what we want. You're also going to notice that the default scale of what we get out of here is actually kind of big. So on an engine by engine basis, you may actually want to dial this down a little bit to say 40 or 50 if you're working with Godot. But we'll do that after the fact when we get it into Godot. We've got a couple of other tools available to you. Specifically, you can have create uh, texture atlases if you so wish. You also have control over the directional lighting here. You can render out to texture. But once we are ready to go, just come here to File, choose Export. And you're going to see here, this is created as a dark basic tool. So you can actually export these things directly as dark basic objects. You have Autodesk Filmbox support or FBX. This is kind of a universal format. But when it comes to um, simplicity, wavefront object files are probably as easy as it gets. So just go ahead, pick that one. I've already created a project, created an empty folder in it called tree. So we'll call this my tree, like so. And that folder will now have, let's see if I've got that there. That folder will now have your various different textures, your OBJ file, the material is defined for you, and you are off to the races. So now let's head on over to the Godot game engine. Here we are. You see it's automatically importing in our assets because I dumped it directly inside of the Godot. There's our tree right there. We got a spatial already created to create our node in and just basically let us create one. There you see, there is our tree and it is ready to use. Now you may notice our leaves look a little crap. And there's a couple of reasons for this, uh, but one of them is Basically, here's so first off. Also, as I mentioned earlier on, um, the default scale of the tree is a little bit big. I changed this down to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3, and we get a much more reasonable sized tree. Now, it doesn't. It, it's not going to have animation in it. It's, it's uh, OBJ format is very limited in what it can do, but it does bring in a uh, very straightforward and clean tree very quickly. Now, what you're going to probably find you have to do, though, when you're dealing with it in uh, the Godot engine, at least, is you're probably going to have to create this guy and in, in, import it instead 
as a scene because uh, I'm not gonna be able to make this change. I'm gonna show you permanently. Uh, but what you're gonna probably wanna do, and especially if you're not using triangle leaves, this is really prevalent if you're using square leaves, uh, but these don't look as good as they should because of one setting. So we're gonna come in here to the mesh instance and you'll notice here we have two sets of surfaces applied to one is the trunk, which we're good with. And then the other one, surface two, is the leaves. And this is where we kind of have a bit of an issue. So I'm gonna just open that guy up and what we want to do is turn transparency on. And then we get slightly more realistic looking leaves. We get some transparency going on with them. And then we can also get, um, there's an option over here. Where is it? Scissor shadowing. Uh, alpha scissoring. This is another one you may want to turn on. Ooh, maybe not this time. No, I gotta lower that down maybe. There we go. Uh, so alpha scissoring will give you the ability to actually have reflections that go through your leaves as well. But here you can see with those two settings, with transparency turned on and alpha scissoring turned on, now if we uh, you know, add a couple more things to our world, so for example, if I go in here and create a mesh instance, this, uh, let's go ahead and create a new one. So a new plane mesh, yep, you, and we'll make you 100 by 100. Actually, we will make you substantial substantially bigger. All right. There we go. All right. So now if we've got that in the world, come in here and we do a directional light. Boom. Uh, let me move you around. What direction are you pointing? That way. Okay. Let's just get you over here. And then here, All right. that should be good. I'll rotate that guy slightly so that it's casting through our tree. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna just come in here. One of the things that you will find with the Godot engine is the default looks a little crap sometimes. So coming here, we'll create a new world environment. Like so, and that's gonna go ahead, edit. And we'll create a sky, procedural sky. Reduce its energy slightly. I don't know why my floor is giving up so much light or maybe my, my light is too close. Here, let me, so what I wanna do is what we want is to cast shadows. Boom, and there you see. Now there's, you're gonna have to tweak the shadows a little bit so that they're showing up at the base because <laughs> we've got a little problem here. It's mostly because I'm actually floating. So if I kind of take my tree down a bit, like so. Come on tree, where's my widget? Oh, it's at the base. There we go. Better looking. So there's a couple of the settings that you had to do. Those, those are the catches here. If you're gonna bring it into is if you don't turn transparent on, your leaves aren't going to look right. And if you do not turn alpha scissoring on, your shadows are not going to cast. But with those two settings done, boom, you have a tree that looks pretty close to the, let's go on back over. Tree we started with, minus the animation. Tree we ended with, minus good lighting. Oh, you get an idea of there. To there. Now again, I do believe you can get the animations out if you create it and export it using the FBX format. Unfortunately, FBX support in Godot is new and not amazing, uh, but you can still get static trees out pretty easy, pretty clean, textured, ready to go with a few small tweaks. So that is it. That is kind of the end of our demonstration. Now, of course, I skipped over so much of what we could have done here. So again, we could have you know, let's make it up. We could change out the leaves really quick. We could change out the curvature. We could change out the center length. Uh, again, I'm making a wildly out of, we've got a giant bush now, basically. Don't laugh. Uh, let's see, we can change the crinkliness curvature. So you, you've got just a huge staggering amount of control over things. Uh, then your branches, you've got the same options here. So we can just really jack up the number of branches. We can start creating some branchlets in our scene. We could cr change the scale of the branches. And you're going to get a, a, a mess really quick, but uh, you do have that option. I wonder how well it'll do my export if it'll change. Let's see if we replace that. Let's see what that does on the immediate list. There we go. So there is our really ugly tree. But once again, it, it, it looks usable. It, it's ready to go. It's game ready. Now, the cool thing here is when you're getting ready to export this out to game, and one of the things I didn't really show you, and I probably should have showed you this before I turned my tree into 
this thing, um, is you actually have a fair bit of control over as well. If we go back to the tree area, something we skipped on earlier on, we can obviously change uh, how everything is gonna go, but we can also come up here and just basically put in our own seed, like so, or we can just randomize the seed and it'll give us a completely different set of trees. Now, probably the most important section here though, is this little section down below. So you notice down here, we're currently using 11,000 polygons for this tree. And you know what, that might be reasonable in your game budget or that might be really high. Cool thing is you've actually got the option right here to control the budget. So there we're down to 6,900 and we could do it. So our leaves are using up a lot of polygons, still 4,400. And we can wire that down a little bit too and then boom. So if you wanted to create LOD versions of it, like level of detail versions, you can just come in here and basically create one tree like this, that would be when it's far away, create one somewhere in the middle, like there, and then have one more that you would export out as the, your far or your closest LOD, and you are set. So there's a lot of power in this particular tool. Got a lot of fine tune control over your budget. And amazingly enough, once again, it is completely free. Again, I don't know if this will run on Linux under Wine. If you can let me know in the comments down below if that does work, I would love to hear that. Uh, but kind of an amazing free tool. So in terms of where you can actually get it, it is available from Evolved Software. Evolved Software is available at evolved-software. Software.com. I, of course, uh, link to this in the linked article down below, so you don't need to worry about that. And as I mentioned earlier on, it, there is a, a library of trees. Here's some of the trees that are going to be made for. You can see you can go from flowering bushes to palm trees to cactuses to, what is that, a willow? I think that's a willow. Uh, so you can create a ton of different kinds of trees with it. It's a very simple uh, install. So it's like uh, I did the zip file, basically just drop it down and load the executable. You're good to go really kind of a cool and powerful tool. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there is a tree sample you can grab to basically download one of these and put it in the trees folder of Treeit. And you've got your examples like banana plant, um, you got bamboo, beech, birch, fir, juniper, pine, spruce, and so on. So if you want to start with a tree that doesn't look like crap, there's some options here as well. So if you need any trees for your game, Treeit is a wonderful tool. And once again, it, it is actually it's free. So if you want to help them out, do hit that donate button. Uh, but otherwise, you can grab it uh, completely free. So that's it. I will talk to you all later. Uh, goodbye.